Hello and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Modelcraft and a little bit of a quick look review on this. This is the Edward 48 scale Bristol F2B uh, and this is the weekend edition and this is not a new kit. It's new to me, I've not seen it before but it's not a brand new release obviously. This was in fact a new tool in 2005 so uh, it's getting on a bit now so is it is it any good by modern standards? Well, let's find out. So I bought this from modelsforsale.com from Vince on a whim. I saw it. Um, I've always enjoyed the kind of myth that surrounds the the Bristol fighter, uh, and it's it, it's it's so um, the tales that surround this aircraft don't really seem to match up with its appearance. It looks like a bit of a donkey, doesn't it? It's big and cumbersome looking compared to the pure fighters of the day and yet it was incredibly successful and in use lasted well beyond the first world war unlike virtually every other aircraft design of the time it, it outlasted them all by a by a mile um so this uh was very very cheap edward are oh, in my opinion absolutely smashing it out of the park with value with weekend editions this one can be had from Vince for £16, one six, £16, which in today's market is just extraordinary. Anyway, let's see what we get. Weekend edition, thus slightly simplified. So let's grab everything out of the box. It's quite heavy, there's quite quite a lot of plastic parts here. There we go. There's those. Okay, and as per, we will start with the plastic. Standard Edward Peely bags, and I must admit, grating noises aside, I do like the, the peelable bags because it means you can safely repackage your kit when you're finished fiddling around with it. So, this is sprue A, so let's start here. Clearly, wings. Now, this kit has come from a time before Edward decided that rib tapes were, in fact, bridges, um, and thus the rib tape detail on this is delightfully restrained and much, much, much more prototypical, actually, than in the more modern stuff. And I have to say, this also, <laughs> please don't think I'm cynical. Um, I mean, I am. <laughs> I have a healthy amount of cynicism. I'm, I'm quite old and I'm in the military. Why wouldn't I have? Uh, but I feel that a lot of the more up-to-date Edward offerings are tooled. And I don't mean this to offend because I do think the Edward product is, is fantastic by the, for them in the most part. But I do feel that the more modern kit designs are told a little bit with a nod towards the aftermarket. And by aftermarket, I mean Edward's own aftermarket. There are a lot of areas in the more modern kits that I think could Edward could do better with the basic plastic parts. But they choose not to, to make people more likely to buy the, the, the brass in additions. I don't know if that's a fact. I, I think it would be surprising if it wasn't. A fact honestly but that's just how I feel but this kit predates that to a degree being from 2005 um, and I think it's quite obvious because actually despite being almost 20 years old there's really very very little flash or nonsense on these parts and I've built sort of two three four year old uh, releases from them which are just uh, you know by modern standards, absolute flash monsters already, and this one really isn't. So you see, you've got a basic engine block there, and a load of wing struts. These look—they're um, not fiddly, but they don't look very strong. And that's quite a plank of a wing to be supporting, so that's going to be fun. Yeah, everything's moulded nice and cleanly. I do much prefer this sort of representation of fabric. It looks much, much more like it should than the more modern stuff does okay next sprue is hopefully B 
finally searching for the bit where it tells us I think it might say B and here we got the fuselage halves um, all one piece really beautifully done again there's really no flash or nonsense I could see the very merest hint of sinkage where the internal framing is on the outside but I can't feel it so it's not terrible you've got control surfaces there and various sort of detail parts um, I do like the surface detail on these parts you can see the stitching so these fabric panels were sort of laced on it's not stitching in this in the form of how you might think of stitching of clothing it's more a kind of probably not as coarse as a shoelace but they're, they're sort of laced onto the frames um, that's already moulded open that vent there it's all it's all really quite nicely done there's a bit of mould seam there truthfully if there's a bit of raggediness and bumpiness in these moulds it's no bad thing these aircraft were basically absolutely handmade uh, and raggedness is part of the deal but there's nothing really horrible there lots and lots of detail parts so seat with its comfy looking quilting they didn't get parachutes but they did get damn fine chairs radiator shutters in open and closed variants and the radiator sort of core itself there there's of course an inline engine in these that's the instrument panel they are very basic but they really didn't have very many instruments back then uh, cockpit floor and so on and so forth and as I say none of this is really suffering from a lot of mould wear at all or doesn't appear to be anyway so the other pack of sprues is this one and that's this is obviously all the uh, the minutia of smaller parts or should I say the plethora there are a lot of parts in this kit considering randomly we'll just pick this one there are a couple of different styles of exhaust there and chassis parts so you know undercarriage legs struts and beams and bits and pieces a couple of guns uh, Lewis guns by the looks and two different propellers, a two blade and a four little bit of flash on the end of the prop tips really nothing to worry about but again all the moulding is still in decent shape there and finally a lot of really small pieces uh, well you know is there any point going around pointing things out? Not really. I can see cockpit parts. I can see little tiny bombs. And struts and lumps and bumps. But again, as is befitting the theme, I'll come up a bit closer. There's really nothing nothing to worry about with regard to mould wear, flash, sink marks, nothing. It's all very crisp, nicely produced. <laughs> it's a good effort so that's it for the plastic parts now we do also get a couple of windscreens and they're not made out of plastic they're made out of um, clear sort of acetate style sheet just marked out in the style of a sort of hood glass there we go. nice one shall I just use the tweezers start mucking about there we go cut out a fixed model as required rather than a moulded plastic part which would be horribly over scale instructions now it used to be that the weekend editions had nasty <laughs> cheap paper instructions to keep the price down they don't anymore they've got proper instruction booklets uh, just the same as the profi packs if I push this up enough you can pause the video and read all this history for yourselves a quick scoot through here so parts map as per 
colour callouts in Guns, Aqueous and Mr Colour. And the, the style of the instruction drawings, as you can see, is very much in the older Edward style, slightly, um, slightly more agricultural in nature than the more modern stuff. And for such a simple aircraft, there is quite a lot to go in there. It's obviously a two-seater. There's quite a lot going on. And all that together, plunk the cockpit together, then we'll do the tail feathers and the front part of the fuselage and put all of that together. Now the thing with building biplane models, and I actually do enjoy building biplane models because it's it's a really different sort of a build to um, you know a more modern aircraft or kit of an aircraft because they're they but they need to be an incredibly modular build. So you can build this fuselage with the tail and probably actually add the undercarriage. No, you can't because of the wing, but you can build this, paint it, finish it, weather it completely before you ever put the wings it wings on and in fact you really need to because as soon as you put the wings on you can't get access to half of this uh, and I, I really like that aspect of building biplanes for some reason here we have the wings there's no jiggage included at all um, and each strut is separate so this is it's one of those things that has the potential to be quite fiddly um, but I, I tend to find with this kind of thing that really patience <laughs> easy to say but patience is the key um, you can make your own jigs uh, Lego actually is really handy at times for making jigs um, and there are various ones available that you can buy sort of laser cut wood wooden jigs that you can sort of adjust and to help with things like this so I would say that get the fuselage set up level and get the get the lower wing fixed to the mini struts and get that sort of in position and fairly solidly set before you start trying to put the rest on. There is a little scrap view at the bottom here showing the appropriate amount of stagger. And by that I mean how much the upper wing sits in front of the lower one. We add in the undercarriage to the lower wing, a bit of guns, bombs if required. two types is that tiny bombs and slightly bigger bombs that you can use and then finally getting it rigged up and there is a full rigging diagram there complete with control runs so there's a fair bit going on with that rigging but it's pretty much bog standard with an X between each strut and then an, a crossed X between each set of struts and then you sort of land in a fly wise it's fairly standard stuff it takes time it takes patience but beyond that it's, it's not terribly hard to do so markings wise again older older sort of weekend edition kits used to uh, cut back on the marking options you'd have maybe two nowadays the weekenders are still got this one has four so I, I, I just think it's staggeringly good value for money personally so your first option from number 11 squadron at fair on tardenois in france november 1917 flown by captain andrew mckeever and second lieutenant leslie pell what's it saying about that captain andrew edward mckeever became the most successful fighter pilot on the, the ftb credited with as many as 31 kills although some were achieved by his gunners Joined the army as an infantry infantryman until 1916 when he was recruited into the Royal Flying Corps. Moved back to the UK to undergo pilot training and so on and so forth. Again, you could pause the video and read through that if you wish. Bog standard scheme, that being the sort of olive green over um, undoped fabric. Sorry, unpainted. It's doped, but it's not painted. Second option, number 111 Squadron, Treblers, uh, Captain Arthur Peck and Captain John J. Lloyd Williams. 
in Palestine, October 1917. And there's a bit of history about those two. Didn't die until 1975, having served also in World War Two. Awesome stuff. Slightly different scheme there because we've got some white areas, but otherwise it's similar. Third option: Captain Sidney Dalrymple and Second Lieutenant. G. Beagle, number 139 squadron in Italy, September 18. This is slightly different, it's got a bit of um, showmanship about the markings, a load of stripes and indeed a small nose out, although I can't tell from looking at that what exactly that's supposed to be. Australian pilot, um, left Australia in 1915 at the age of 30 so quite old for a pilot of the time and ended up being an ace they're saying that this was a black and white stripe on a lot of the aircraft but they think that that was omitted in this case and the final option Lieutenant Sidney Odes and Lieutenant Brampton of 22 Squadron and Villeneuve de Virtu in France, 8-19-18. Okay, and this marking option is showing uh, the aircraft in which he shot down his first albatross in January 1918. Um, and this is one of the aircraft that was paid for with funds from a Maharaja Rameshwar Singh and that's what this inscription here is all about otherwise the scheme's very standard but quite colourful due to the, the red wheel covers I quite like that one So there's a good selection of markings, uh, typical of the aircraft and of the period. As I said, these, these did continue well after the war and there are quite a lot of other options out there. And it would helpfully provide an entire page for notes. Back of the instruction, um, oh look, some Edward goodies for this, <laughs> for this kit. Some Brassin Lewis guns with spare cartridges and a couple of other... Uh, Scout kits, the Camel and the SE5A. Beautiful, lovely. Now, finally, the decals. Ominous music plays in the background. Edward decals. Oops. Shall I go through the whole Edward decal rant again? I guess so. A lot of bad press Edward decals have been getting of late. And these are the new style decals with the film that you can peel off if you choose to. But it's not the film that's causing all of the upset actually. It's the quality of the printing. Uh, and by that I mean take for example the red and the blue here. And if I bring this up close to the camera I do not know if it's really going to come through on, on the footage. But I can see with my eyes that both of those colours are slightly dotty. Uh, they're not solid sort of block colours. There's just a slight pimpliness about it. It's it's difficult to see ultimately because there's some sort of marks on there where the um, protective paper gets slightly adhered. These aren't bad though. I've seen much, much worse. In every other way, I think these are great decals because if I just angle that, look how the carrier film is tapered. It's not got a harsh, sharp edge on it at all. So if you choose to leave this film on, and you absolutely can, you can varnish over it and the edges of the carrier film will, will disappear in short order. 
there's still always going to be a depth this difference unless you put enough clear coat on to actually sand out to remove that thickness that the decal has you'll always have a thickness to the decal but that in itself isn't an issue because markings are separate from paint and they have their own thickness it isn't an issue the issue is with the fact that a lot a lot of most decals have a very sharp transition from the carrier film to nothing and it's quite difficult to visually disguise that transition so these with this beautifully tapered film make it a lot easier and if you choose to remove the film obviously you don't even need to worry about that I generally do actually um, but as I say you don't need to you do get some sort of instrument decals here and various prop stencils you even get some seat belts and again if you fit these and remove the carry film these might look okay so I might be happy with that and it certainly would save the added expense of buying photo etch should you not wish to or you can use them as a pattern to to make your own out of some lead foil or similar some stencil detail and the rest of it this this isn't a bad this isn't a bad sheet at all there is as I say that slight dottiness is there but it's not it's not bad on this occasion actually I think that's perfectly fine So there you have it, 16 English pounds worth of weekend edition Bristol Fighter. I've got to say, I think that is astonishingly good value for money. It's a beautiful kit, slightly older, yes, but as you've just seen, it's still completely lovely. Uh, Google around and no doubt you'll see lots of beautifully built examples on the interwebs. Um, Edward do actually have quite a full range of World War One fighters, and I remember going back quite a lot of years. Edward were kind of known known for doing World War One biplane kits right back at the beginning, uh, but they have retooled the majority of them, so uh, you can buy them safe in the knowledge that they're going to be good quality kits actually now. Uh, I'm I'm really pleased with this. I think it's incredible value for money. Uh, and I look forward to hopefully having a few minutes to put it together at some point. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. I hope that's been useful to you. Um, and thanks as ever for all of the wonderful support from all of you. I really do appreciate it. And with all of that said, it only remains for me to say, look after yourselves, look after each other. And Genesis out.